Uh, my name is Najat Abdel Haq. I'm a Palestinian German. I grew up in Palestine and came uh, to do my master's studies in Germany. Um, I'm a, I grew up in three trilingual context, uh, German, Arabic, and English. And, um, and my background is economics. I studied my BA and my master are in economics and international relations. And later when I decided to work on my PhD, uh, I kind of shifted uh, uh, towards history or Middle East studies. It depends how one, one wants to see it. And my main, main research and my published book is on the role of um, Jew Jewish and Greeks communities in the Egyptian economy before, before Nasser. The motivation is maybe more a personal one. I, I grew up um, in, a, in a rather mixed, uh, mixed religious uh, context in Palestine and was always curious about uh, the Armenians we, we have in Jerusalem, um, Armenians. And I was aware that also the Jewish community in Palestine uh, before the British mandate and before the establishment of the state of Israel was kind of Palestinian community. I come from Nablus, we have the Samarites, which are also Jews, you know. So there was always a curiosity about this. Better to say it's nearly impossible to discuss the history uh, of, of minorities in Egypt, and especially if we are talking about the Jewish uh, community, without touching poli politics. So my work is interdisciplinary. It's uh, historical, it's economic, and it's political science. To some extent, maybe economic history. Uh, some people even say it's social history. So it's really interdisciplinary uh, between this, this, uh, these fields, yeah. Uh, the archives. The archives are fascinating. Um, then finding um, names of people you, you heard about. Um, meeting uh, Albert Arié, who is in fact the last male, living male Jew in Cairo. It was really uh, such, such an important moment. And I'm so lucky that uh, we became kind of friends. He's a very old man. He's over 80 now. And, uh, and having all these talks and discussions with him. Okay, first of all, generally people should be interested in their history because um, only understanding our own history will help us or help the people uh, to look into the future. Uh, it's, it's, it's like we, we cannot be unrooted, you know, uh, or not, not think about our roots. Regarding, regarding um, especially my work on Egypt and on the Jewish community and the Greek community in Egypt, uh, I think it's even more important, it's not only because of history, but, but because of the complexity of the situation in the Middle East. And uh, I'm sure many people say, oh my God, I, d I never understood what's going on and who is, with who, uh, who is with who and who is against whom and why and so on. So I think knowing uh, or knowing in details about this history and about communities that were living in Egypt or in Syria, Yemen and Iraq and that, that left, uh, due to many circumstances, among them political, but not only, this is important also to mention, uh, gives an awareness, gives an awareness of how things, um, um, how things developed and, and, and how things can end very fast, even if, we, if, if, have, if having a prosperity. The other thing is that I really truly believe that our the, the treating minorities in societies is indication of how healthy these societies are. Uh, if a society doesn't manage to deal with the other, no matter what the other is, but the Greeks or the Jews are a very clear symbol of what the other can be, uh, this is an indication that there is a huge problem. So really, I think um, um, knowing about the history of minorities, for example, in Egypt, and knowing more about it, will support the, the, the society now to know how to deal with people who are, who are different than they are, no matter if it was an ethnic issue or religious issue or even in mind or even a different sexual orientation or whatever. So that's why I really think it's, um, even it sounds very academic, but it's in the core of the, of, of the, of the living of the people now, nowadays. Well, I think it was always uh, not, not an easy situation with the ups and downs. Uh, I don't belong to those who romantic, uh, romanticize uh, the history um, because uh, 
there were really different different phases and there was also not only an issue of ethnicity there was always also an issue of class you know like uh, if we take uh, Rambam or Ibn Maymun uh, he was one of the most important figures uh, but he was a philosopher and he was a doctor and so on so Ibn Maymun is Ibn Maymun and Ibn Maymun, Maymun is not the Egyptian Jews or at least the Andalusian Jews you know um, and uh, nowadays um, first of all I understand that not only Muslims, but also Jews and to some, some extent Christians, uh, that many people are like going back to the roots of their uh, religion, maybe as a reaction to the modernity and postmodernity. I'm not sure about it. But I also understand uh, that the relation today between Muslims and, and Jews is very much um, uh, heavy and is in the shadow of the Israel-Palestine conflict or the Israel-Arab conflict. The conflict hijacks many things, and among among these things is this uh, this relation. So um, the only chance that we have is to try to raise up a generation that uh, accepts the other religion as it is and does not always politicize um, politicize it. But 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 this is a huge challenge. And to be very honest, I'm not very optimistic regarding this. It's, it's not only about Muslim and Jews, but it's also about um, different people, especially in the situation we live now in the world.